Human beings are basically Jaegers made of meat and electricity, piloted by wet balls of fat operating bone stilts. We're soft, borderline squishy, blood balloons just waiting for something to come along and pop us. What I'm saying is, despite our ability to survive insane challenges, on average, we're pretty easy to kill. Which is why up until John Wick, gunfights in most movies and video games relied on one simple trick to keep their heroes alive during armed combat. That trick? None of the bad guys guys could aim for once the good guy showed up. In this video on Nerd Explains, I'll show you why almost every gunfight in movies and video games will end with your hero getting shot. Henchmen get a raw deal. Bad bosses, no benefits, well they get decent pay, but they're reduced to big red bullseyes on the hero's mini-map for easy murdering. Plus, their accuracy and weapon stats take a nosedive whenever the good guy comes crashing through the wall of their warehouse. Maybe it's performance anxiety, or maybe it's a director ignoring reality for our entertainment. In the real world, henchmen would be mowing heroes down every day of the week. There's a few good reasons for this. One, most henchmen are trained badass. Villains aren't fluffing their ranks with pacifists and crossfitters. They're recruiting skilled soldiers and killers, mercenaries, guns for hire, and loyal acolytes. And if they take in untrained labor, they don't stay untrained for long. Mexican cartels use actual military training to prepare their soldiers for battle. We're talking rigorous tactical instruction, including how to adapt under fire and pivot when a strategy isn't working. Yes, this means they can actually aim, and they're returning fire constantly while the hero is shooting. Two, most goons are equipped for battle. It costs money to keep your army up to date with body armor and military grade weaponry, but it also costs money to train new soldiers after you lose the old skilled ones. It's why militias, gangs, and cartels invest so heavily in protective gear and state-of-the-art weaponry, including AR-15s, AK-47s, anti-tank guns, grenade launchers, RPGs, and large caliber belt-fed machine guns, and usually at least a few armored vehicles. Three, they can shoot shoot anywhere on your body. Despite what you've seen in movies and video games, gunshots work even if they're not to your face or chest. A shot to your gun arm may not kill you immediately, but it'll be the reason you can't return fire on the enemy cornering you with an AK-47. And if you hide behind a car, which won't stop the bullets anyways, they will aim for your legs, then shoot you in the face when you fall. 4. If all else fails, henchmen will kill you with sheer ammo volume and teamwork. The 30 round capacity in most modern rifles, out number and overpower the smaller caliber bullets in the Walter P99 or Glock 19 any day. But remember, it's rare a hero's only up against a single henchman at a time, and it's only in movies and games that the henchmen wait their turns to open fire. Some quick math tells me that 10 henchmen with a combined minimum capacity of 300 rounds before additional magazines and guns come into play outguns a guy with a single pistol or rifle any day. So just to recap, your hero's up against a team of highly trained killers. They're armed to the teeth, and they have only one goal, to kill the hero before he can carry out his mission. In Extraction, Chris Hemsworth infiltrates a den of kidnappers to rescue a rich local's son. He knocks to gain entry, drawing a goon closer before firing through the door. He moves deeper into the room, checking his corners and double-tapping every unprepared thug he sees, swiping guns out of their hands before delivering his trained kill shots. Outside, additional henchmen hear the gunfire, but they're taken out by a well-concealed sniper on a distant roof, providing Chris strategic backup. Back in the room, a goon with a machete knocks Chris's gun away. Chris dodges blade after blade, and one final gunman, killing henchmen with tables, rakes, and even a metal coffee cup. I'll kill you with my teacup. Cool. Only a couple small issues here. If the henchman had prepared when they heard the knock on the door, he would have entered to gunfire from three directions, mowing down the first guy to his right while the one behind him shot him in the back. During the blade fight, he narrowly dodges death when a guy wielding a handgun steps into grabbing range and he's able to force the gun aside. This wouldn't have happened if the guy had just fired from the open doorway. There was no need to shoot at him at point blank range. And as for the rest of these machete fighters, they're choosing to engage in melee fighting with a trained mercenary instead of picking up any one of their weapons of their dead fallen comrades. There's no need to double team him with blades when one of you could distract him while the other one fires two rounds into his head. This fight works out because he's rarely double teamed, and when he is, it's with machetes, not guns. In Mission Impossible Fallout, Ethan is chased through the streets of Paris by trained police. In a narrow alley, he jumps onto a malfunctioning motorcycle while three officers climb onto a semi-truck 
truck, blocking the path between them and Hunt. As the officers pull out their service pistols, the motorcycle finally revs to life, and Ethan speeds away down the alley with bullets hitting within inches all around him. Naturally, none of them hit him. Shot accuracy depends on skill and training. Recent studies have shown that in the heat of conflict, police firing accuracy only hovers around 35%, meaning that 6 out of every 10 bullets doesn't hit its target. Other studies suggest that most soldiers and police don't fire their weapons at all when given the order to do so, hoping that someone else's bullet will fix the situation. So, maybe Hunt could escape this scenario unharmed. But, accuracy increases with shorter distances and lower target movement. These cops are only about 15 feet away from Hunt when they open fire, and he can only move in a single direction down a narrow alley without any cover. If all three of them shot at once and emptied their magazines, their collective firepower would more than make up for that 35% accuracy rate. If 6 out of every 10 bullets miss, then that means 4 are hitting their target. And remember, they don't have to kill him to end his mission. It's a high probability that Hunt is getting winged or taken around to the gut or back, massively interfering with his ability to control that motorcycle. Realistically, Ethan Hunt's mission ends here. In Red 2, Moses and Marvin hit the pavement when Hans opens fire with the M134 minigun from 20 feet away. This is a six-barrel rotary machine gun that can shoot between 2,000 and 6,000 rounds per minute. In seconds, the gunfire has crushed the vans and cars in front of the men like empty Coke cans. They take cover behind the van's tires as debris and tiny pieces of metal shrapnel blow past them at 2,000 feet per second, nonstop for nearly 45 seconds. And somehow, they survive. You know what I'm gonna say. Both of these men are gonna be red Swiss cheese three seconds into this assault when Hans realizes he can aim lower. This machine gun isn't just capable of panning from side to side. It can also tilt up and down. There is nothing short of plot armor stopping Han from aiming this brutal killing machine two inches down. Maybe he doesn't even have to. As we see in this shot, the bullets are hitting low enough to go straight through Marvin like hot lead through a f***ing human body. Now, there's no way to make a list like this without paying homage to the king of gung fu, John Wick. Tracking the man who killed his dog, Wick enters a nightclub slash private spa. Just as he spies his prey in a nearby room, a goon spots him. Soon all eyes are on Wick. A henchman calls out over the radio, Baba Yaga is here. Wick takes down two goons before a behemoth knocks John's killing shot off course and John triple taps him. As Yosef bumbles an escape, John moves through the building picking off red shirt after red shirt. It's a bloodbath, partially because Vigo's too cheap to spring for Kevlar for his insane number of henchmen at this one facility, but also because Wick is a master of precision, accuracy, and sheer will. Just look at this shot. He turns on a dime to find his gun aimed at a concrete wall, then pivots barely two inches before honing in on his next target, double tapping him. That is exquisite. John uses his environment to get the upper hand on a man before he turns and takes two shots to the chest from two advancing goons. He falls back, saved from the bullets by the Kevlar woven into his suit, but not from the painful throbbing impact through his clothing. When he runs out of bullets, he disarms his next attacker. The thug tosses him over the railing. Wick lands hard. He fires back with a secret second weapon, then stumbles away, wounded, but alive to hunt another day. Wick is awesome for his lightning fast ability to adapt to any situation he finds himself in. Almost too lightning quick at times. Like when he turns before the goon comes through the door here. The club music is thumping, so he can't hear anyone coming before he sees them. It's bad luck, or more likely, a mistimed stunt entrance that has this guy come in after Wick has turned to look for him. Wick is an expert, but remember, he's moving through a crowded club, unable to tell Thug from Partier. He has to hesitate before firing. Vigo's goons already know what he looks like. Target identification for them is easy. Slender suited dude with long black hair and a sharp black beard? Open fire. This is the Russian Mafia. They disappear people all the time, so collateral damage isn't really a concern either. Don't get me wrong, the choreography is epic, but it's still choreography. These guys are coming at him one at a time, almost all the way through this fight, and the only time two guys fire at once, they both hit Wick in the chest. Vigo's guards would be highly trained, or trained enough to know to wait out of sight for John to enter, then pop him in the head as he walks in. Doorways are called fatal funnels for a reason, like this guy, who could have fired while Wick was smoking his friends. These henchmen might not have Wick's training for headshots, but they all know he's here the second that call goes out over the security radio. All of them would have had their guns drawn and ready the second they heard he was in the building. None of this casual gun down by their side 
and only the idiots would be trying to go at him alone, unless they had no other choice. If this were real, they'd come at him all at once, letting him take down the people stupid enough to get within gun-grabbing range, while everyone else shoots him in the back. As soon as John Wick started taking rounds to that suit's Kevlar, he's going down, and then they'll finish him off with a shot to the head. And this is in a scenario where none of Vigo's goons brought rifles. Rifle caliber bullets would punch through that suit's Kevlar like a hot knife through again a human body. I can hear you now. Um, you clearly haven't seen John Wick Chapter 2, nerd. Wick's just a total bad with combo moves capable of wiping out entire armies. I know what you're talking about. This scene in which a party crowd seems to collectively recognize him and move aside so his target Santino can get a nice hard look at him before escaping into a maelstrom of metal. Wick pulls his gun, taking out seven guys with headshots in about three seconds. An eighth idiot walks right into gun grabbing range. Wick uses him to get in a little jujitsu practice before shooting two advancing morons and taking out the last one with his own gun. I already said John Wick is an underworld king, and I absolutely buy that he has the accuracy to rapid kill like this. I'm just pointing out that this eighth guy would have probably shot John from 10 feet out of reach before he could reload his weapon, and Tweedle D and Tweedle Dip here must need some hugs or something because I have no idea why they're running in out of nowhere with their guns in their hands pointed at the floor. In commando, Arnold Schwarzenegger navigates through rough terrain to the bad guy's villa to save his daughter after blowing up a few buildings made of what seems to be paper. By the time he reaches the ridge line by the mansion, the villain's goons already know he's out there. A hundred henchmen swarm the rooftops and spread out across the wide open lawn, all firing at him at once. Yet somehow, Arnie's mowing down dudes from the cover of a tiny tree. He's firing wildly and with zero accuracy using his magical infinite ammo gun. Eventually, Arnie leaves his flimsy excuse for cover to fire in the open and toss a grenade, dipping out to continue his rampage unopposed. Do I believe that there are henchmen who are dumb enough to leave the cover of this mansion with its infinite windows where they could shoot Arnold from relative safety and instead waltz across the wide open space like this? Most dead. Definitely. The problem is, these guys work for Arius, a Central American dictator. Where is their body armor? Where is their training? Where is their situational awareness? Why are these guys on the rooftop standing up like giant bullseyes? In real life, the bad guys don't silhouette themselves in the open for an easy no-scope because they don't want to die. Don't believe me? Check out Reddit combat footage. Rarely do you see the enemy. It's kind of frustrating. You see brief muzzle flashes that disappear when you try to return to fire. It's hard. It sucks. And Arnold is definitely taking hits. He's not wearing plate armor that could stop the enemy rifle rounds. <laughs> He's not even taking cover at all. This is good old-fashioned 1980s action movie logic at its best. Only the hero knows what the hell they're doing, even in a war-torn country under a military dictatorship. In the masterpiece F9 from the Fast and the Furious franchise, Dom's crew is ambushed by a heavily armed militia at the site of a plane crash. Roman races away from four soldiers in a jeep who pepper the ground at his feet with rapid machine gun fire. Roman takes shelter behind a stone wall, races upstairs, and shoots two soldiers down before running out of bullets and ditching his weapons while trying to reload. As another henchman with a rifle appears, Roman tackles him, sending them off a ledge to a stone floor below. Troops swarm in from all directions, wearing heavy body armor, carrying AKs. At the last second, Roman grabs a rifle and returns fire, both up at the terrace of trained killers and through windows and doors on his own level of the building. Someone needs to call Jules from Pulp Fiction, because we just witnessed a miracle. There's only about a 20 second stretch here, from the time he hides behind the wall to the point where he body slams the soldier, where reality entered the equation at all. Before that, he's running in a straight line away from heavy machine gun fire. Sure, the soldiers are swinging wildly in the back of their jeeps as they turn the corner and gain on Roman, but they're bracing against the frame of the vehicle, essentially treating it as a gun rack. Once down off the truck, their intimidation fire at Roman, while he's ducked down on the staircase, shows pretty exceptional precision. Their bullets are clustered, repeatedly hitting the same spot on the wall, meaning they're well-trained and capable of aiming at this short distance. The only reason they aren't hitting him is because there's a wall, which makes it pretty miraculous a few seconds later when Roman jumps off the top level to the bottom and gets outnumbered and outgunned on all sides by men in full body armor with their weapons drawn on him. And somehow, Roman's able to spin 360 degrees firing from the hip and lands all his shots without himself getting shot. I mean, it wasn't from the hip technically, but you can't tell me he 
he's actually aiming that shit. And yeah, he did get shot, but that's not a bulletproof vest. That's a tactical vest, and he still somehow didn't get shot anywhere else. And if he did get shot, his ass would be on the ground, and he would have been killed. What I'm saying is, this is total bullshit. Now, could someone like, say, John Wick, with training and a level head, luck into surviving something like this? Mm, may maybe. But what they can't do with their single gun and two eyeballs is fire at multiple targets simultaneously. The only way he's killing everyone and getting away completely intact is if these henchmen took turns firing at him, which ain't happening in real life. And even if they did, he'd still probably die. Movie gunfights are cool. But once you look past the choreography, you start to notice a lot of convenient patterns keeping the heroes safe from harm. In one-on-one -on -one fights, where the resources are relatively even on both sides, there's definitely a chance of the heroes walking home without a bullet wound. But the more henchmen there are, the more ammo kicking around, the better trained they are, the better equipped they are, the lower their chance of surviving unscathed becomes. Villains aren't just hiring any to guard their stuff. Not when they have the money to recruit from some of the most elite special forces organizations on the planet. These henchmen know how to aim and they know how to fight. They're returning effective fire at a rate much higher than the hero. In the real world, our heroes are getting shot anytime there isn't a weapons choreographer with an earshot. There's probably damn near a million other examples, but I want to see comments about your favorite completely unsurvivable gunfights in movies. Mm.